Hello. In today's video, I would like to talk about loop invariance. In my previous video, I spoke about big O notation and using that to reason about an algorithm's performance as the input size n increased. With loop invariance, we can reason about an algorithm's correctness. There's no point in having an algorithm that's performant but is incorrect. And it's very similar to the concept of induction. So if you've seen induction in your studies, you should be very comfortable with loop invariance. And a loop invariant is a predicate or a statement that holds true through three different conditions. The first condition is that of initialization. And this states that the loop invariant should be true before the first iteration of the loop. The second condition that we need to show is that of maintenance. This states that if the loop invariant is true before the k iteration, then the loop invariant will be true for the k plus 1 iteration. The third and final condition that we need to prove is that of termination and this states that we are expecting a useful property as a result of iterating through the loop. If we can prove all three conditions hold then we have proven that our algorithm is correct. How does a loop invariant differ from a loop conditional? Well, we can see that after a loop terminates, it should have a true property, whereas a loop conditional is false after a loop terminates. Let's now have a look at a quick example. In this case, summing the elements of an array so what's our input going to look like? Well, our input is going to be A, an array of n real numbers. And it should be made clear that unlike your, the programming languages that you're likely used to, we're going to start indexing from 1. So our elements are going to be like A1, A2, through to An, rather than being a zero-based index. So what's our output going to be from summing the array? Well our output is going to be s which is going to be the sum of the elements of the array. So for instance s is going to equal a1 plus a2 plus da 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 all through to a n. So effectively, yeah, we're summing every single element from the array. So what's our code going to look like? Well, we're going to initialize s to 0, and then we're going to iterate over the array. So for i equals 1 to the length of a, so we're iterating over all elements. Then in our loop body, we are going to set s to be equal to s plus the i element of a and finally we're going to return s the result now let's take a moment to think about the loop invariant what's the statement that's going to hold true throughout though for those three conditions how about before the kth iteration of the loop s the sum contains the sum of the first k minus 1 elements of the array. After we've defined our loop invariant, we then move on to proving it for those three conditions as specified before. So during the initialization stage, s is going to be set to 0, i is going to be set to 1, so based on our loop invariant, we will have the sum of the first i minus 1 elements, in which case 
we're going to have the sum of zero elements or the sum of an empty array. S is equal to zero, which is the sum of an empty array. We then move on to proving the second condition, which is maintenance. Remember, if the loop invariant is true for iteration k, then we're expecting it to be true for iteration k plus 1. Now, let's take a look at the loop body to see what is happening during each iteration. So during iteration k, s is going to be equal to a1 plus a2 plus da 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 up to a k minus 1. So during the kth iteration, we're going to add the element at a k to what we've already had, which is going to be the sum of the first k elements. We're then going to move on to iteration k plus 1. So before the start of this, we can see that s is going to be equal to the sum of the first k elements as seen here. So we have proven that the maintenance step works. Finally, we need to prove termination. After the loop has terminated, i is going to be set to the length of a plus 1. Therefore, s is going to be equal to the value of the sum of all elements in array A. Thus we've proven that the termination condition holds and we've proven our loop invariant holds. Finally, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please like and subscribe.